I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 369. My review of episodes 9 and 10, the two concluding episodes of the Who Killed JFK podcast with Rob Reiner and Soledad O'Brien. Well, episode 9 is devoted to Jack Ruby, born Jacob Rubenstein, or Rubenstein, the man who shot Lee Harvey Oswald, as we all know, on live television two days after John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Now, I remember seeing that on television on November 24th, 1963, as my 16-year-old self was struggling to make sense of the horrendous assassination that had taken place two days earlier. The first thing that came into my mind as I saw Ruby lunge forward and shoot Oswald was that this meant Oswald was not the person who shot JFK, and the real killers of JFK had hired Ruby to kill Oswald to prevent a trial and the truth from coming out. I'd seen enough of Perry Mason, Dragnet, or whatever shows on television to know that's how it worked. But episode 9 of the Who Killed JFK podcast provides some very important details. Although Ruby famously said that he killed Oswald to spare Jackie the grief, she would have endured as a witness in the trial of Oswald. We learn that Ruby also said that there was a much bigger story involving Cuba that would sooner or later come out. But he never got to tell that story because he was afraid he himself would be killed. A quote from him, I want to tell the truth, but I can't tell it here. Well, He eventually said to Warren Commission members in Dallas in June 1964, asking that he be transferred to Washington, D.C. That apparently was where he thought he could tell the truth. But his request was denied, and Jack Ruby died of cancer and a pulmonary embolism in January 1967 before the new trial that he had been granted could begin. Now, the podcast doesn't mention this, but I couldn't help wondering if the CIA heart attack gun might have been responsible for putting Ruby, now a grave danger to the CIA, out of his misery. Even if not, the podcast, Who Killed JFK, raises the important question, of why the Warren Commission waited so long to interview Jack Ruby. Gerald Ford, then a congressman on the commission, later to become president in 1974 when Richard Nixon resigned. Well, Ford might have known more about this, and I wonder if any of his children might have any more light to shed on what their father really thought about Jack Ruby and Lee Harvey Oswald. And the Who Killed JFK podcast concluded with a satisfying episode that wrapped up this enduring, searing mystery, almost as good as it could have. Reiner and O'Brien's final comments get to the point. This podcast arose from the question that has been nagging at Reiner's soul since 1963, who killed the president? And although the podcast didn't and couldn't have provided the complete story wrapped up in a package with a bow, which we and the world could now rely on without needing answers to still unanswered questions, The podcast 
provided some important signposts, even some answers, and this is indeed a worthy thing indeed to forward to future researchers and generations. Like Rob Reiner, I felt lied to about the JFK assassination all these years, angered and aggravated, and I'm glad this podcast can now serve as a blueprint for the uncovering of further lies and the wiping away of at least some of the lies that have plagued us all over this planet all these many years. We and our descendants deserve nothing less than the truth, or as much of it as we can get, about this monstrous act that stole our future and warped our relationship to the cosmos. Now, the biggest specific takeaway that this concluding episode gives us is that there were four shooters. Now, I admit, I know almost nothing about ballistics and forensics, but I found that takeaway convincing. And coupled with it is the fact that Lee Harvey Oswald was not one of the four shooters. As Reiner has said over and over again, Why would Oswald say he was the, quote, patsy, unquote, if he had really killed JFK? If he had thought the assassination was saving the country, wouldn't he have proudly proclaimed it, as John Wilkes Booth had done about his killing of Abraham Lincoln? Or if Oswald had nothing whatsoever to do with the assassination, he would have repeatedly proclaimed that as well, shouting from the rooftops to the media that he was innocent, that why was he being identified as the killer? Instead, the word Patsy strongly suggests that he knew something about the assassination and how it happened, and he was realizing he was the fall guy. What Oswald knew a lot about was the CIA and how it operated. Now, the podcast stopped short of saying the CIA, the mafia, or Cuban exiles specifically ordered the assassination. But there's ample evidence that they all participated, maybe more as individuals in some cases than formal members of their organizations like the CIA. On the one hand, the passage of time makes it increasingly difficult to identify specific culprits. On the other hand, the players in the assassination had families, maybe children, who might have heard something important, some additional key to unlocking this jagged puzzle. And this very podcast, Who Killed JFK?, points in the right directions. So hats off to Rob Reiner and Soledad O'Brien, to Dick Russell, who did a lot of the research for their podcast, and to David Hoffman, who did the writing. And I heard in the credits that some of the recording for the Who Killed JFK podcast was done at CDM Studios. I've done some work with them myself, so hats off to to Charles de Montebello. The big question that I'd still like to see addressed, as I mentioned in my very first review of this podcast, is why JFK's brother, Robert F. Kennedy sat still for the Warren Commission's bundle of lies about a lone shooter, etc. And RFK, of course, was then assassinated himself in 1968, likely on his way to becoming President of the United States. Perhaps all the talented people who put together the crucially important Who Killed JFK podcast could do another podcast on Who Killed RFK. And let me say, I know there are a lot of people who have been reading all the books that spell out a conspiracy that killed JFK, 
and uh, probably an equal number of books that debunk some of these conspiracies. And I think that those people should keep on researching as much as they can what happened back in November 1963. And I would urge any and all of those people to listen to this Who Killed JFK podcast and see how that measures up against their extensive reading and thought and research that they've given and done into Who Killed John F. Kennedy. The Light on Light Through podcast. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Light on, Light Through, and its review of the final two episodes of Who Killed JFK. I will be back here next week, next Tuesday afternoon, with another episode of Light on, Light Through. Could be a review of a great science fiction series. I finished watching For All Mankind Season 4 a couple of days ago. Maybe I'll review that. Could be a review of something else. Who knows? Stay tuned. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sound, and keep doing whatever you can to help the brave people of Israel and Ukraine fight off the terrorists and fascists that have attacked their countries. The Light on Light Through podcast. Athens, 2042 A.D. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.